All right. The next hour is uh, endovascular therapy. Okay, so here's my my um, preface comment. Uh, there's no way to, for me to go over in one hour everything you need to know about endovascular therapy. So I'm going to go over some of the important things that has appeared um, for your preparation purposes relating to this topic. Okay, 43-year-old mildly obese woman with chronic abdominal pain. She was referred for diagnosis of median arcuate ligament syndrome, which compresses the celiac artery. Um, the duplex ultrasound was ordered. During the inspiration, what changes is expected to the celiac artery with this patient with celiac artery compression? A, you can see a decrease of the severity of SMA stenosis. B, increase in severity of celiac artery stenosis. C, decrease in severity of celiac artery stenosis. D, increase in velocity, uh, severity of SMA stenosis. E, no change in the severity of celiac artery stenosis. Okay, so this question deals with the, what you expect to find during ultrasound in someone with a celiac artery compression or median arcuate lig ligament syndrome. Raise your hand and think answer A, <clears throat> B, C, D, and E. Okay, so I have folks raise your hand for B and C. The answer is D. C, decrease. C, as in Charlie. Decrease in velocity. So key here is inspiration. So this condition, mouse, medium arcuate ligament syndrome, because of extrinsic compression of celiac arteries is in, caused by the lower part of the cruciate diaphragm. And this is worse during expiration. Now, it's very difficult to elicit this during exam. So if a patient truly comes to your office with this condition, you ask them to take deep breath and in, in, to, to exhale, and it's very difficult to, in, to elicit the symptom to associate with, deep, uh, to, uh, with inspiration versus expiration. However, during expiration, um, in part because of the constrictor diaphragm, as you elevate the diaphragm, expanding the chest wall, and that can worsen the uh, compression of the celiac artery. And uh, so the velocity is usually elevated um, during the end of expiration. And um, this condition is also known as celiac artery compression syndrome, typically happening in female, 20 to 40 years young. And you get a um, symptom of postprandial abdominal pain, and the treatment is to release it. And uh, schematically, there's a compression of celiac artery right here. And, and geographically, um, this is what you see. Now, if you ever do angiogram on these patients for whatever reason, you want to do a cross table lateral shot. You also want to provoke this compression. So you would take pictures while patient, at, at the end of inspiration, you also want to take another shot at the end of expiration. That's how you would see the differential compression. So by the end of the um, um, inspiration, by the end of expiration, you will see the um, worsening. And um, so this is another study that demonstrated that they measure the degree of stenosis based on angiographic finding. At the end of ex expiration, when you exhale, the stenosis is a lot higher. The same patient, at the end of inspiration, you can see simply roughly a 20% reduction. Not consistent, but generally you see a better improvement at the end of inspiration. And you may also come across questions, they present you with ultrasound finding and ask you which one is what, what phase of the study was performed. So keep in mind that during the inspiration, loss is quite normal. At the expiration, velocity tend to get worse. Okay, 43-year-old triathlete presents with a clinic, to your clinic with unilateral calf and thigh pain during maximal effort. The pain gets better with rest, ultrasound and CT scan show of the involved extremity may show what? Okay, so A, palpital artery entrapment, B, Baker cyst in the palpital space, C, external iliac artery face with spasm and endofibrosis, D, aortic iliac atherosclerotic disease, E, adventitial cystic disease. Raise your hand, think this is A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so I have folks raise hand for A, C, and others. Okay, so as I look at the question here, all right, 43, 
you don't get 43-year-old patient come to the office for peripheral artery disease. They're fairly young. Another thing is triathletes. Okay, this is there's certain vascular disease that can occur with high-performance athletes, which we'll talk about some of them later. So triathletes present to you with some kind of problem, some kind of claudication problem, and uh, so any of these conditions certainly can lead to some kind of claudication symptom. The answer here is actually C. In spe specifically, triathletes. They run, they bike, they swim. In part, what particular sporting event in a triathlon can lead to this injury? Bicycling. Okay, so if you hate exercise, this question gives you the excuses <laughs> not to run, not to bike, because you don't want to wake up one day with endofibrosis. So if you have chronic high-performance professional cycling, this condition has been shown. They can get external iliac artery aneurysm because of a mechanical irritation to your pelvic, particularly your external carotid arteries. They can get vasospasm, can lead to endofibrosis. This will occur in high performance cycling um, cyclists. And that's what you need to read about. Okay, so which of the following statement regarding adventitial cystic disease of the popliteal artery is true? A, dorsiflexion of the foot results in loss of an ipsilateral pedal pulse. B, is related to defect in fibrin one gene. C, it's usually presents a complete occlusion of the affected artery. C, it's usually found in equal frequency between male and female. C, I mean E, CT scan is, CT angiogram is the preferred imaging modality. Okay, so this deal is cystic adventitial disease of palpitor artery. Raise your hand, thanks, is A, B, C, D, E. Okay, all right, so I have a couple hands in A, a C, E, okay. So let's talk about this. Adventitial cyst disease, dorsiflexion of the foot resulting in loss of its lateral disease. This is a pretty classic physical exam. If it's positive, it tells you its diagnosis is something, but not this condition. So if somebody who comes in, if they dorsiflex and pedal pulse will disappear, what's the diagnosis? Popliteal, we've got popliteal entrapment syndrome. Specifically, it's active plantar flexion or passive dorsiflexion because you are contracting the gastrocnemius muscles. And um, so if you have this finding, you need to think about popliteal artery entrapment syndrome. Okay, so that's not a choice here in this question. B, fibrin G1 gene defect. That's not the answer. If somebody comes to you with a fibrin 1 gene uh, mutation, what diagnosis is that? Marfan, okay, so Marfan syndrome is associated with fibrin 1 gene defect. Okay, so C, so therefore B is not the answer. C, patient was usually presenting a complete occlusion. Okay, that's not a case here. So cystic adventitial disease, you get local compression because of the cystic mass. And you don't get occlusion, therefore C is not the choice. And D, found female, male and female equal frequency, that's not true. Therefore, the answer here, to get next more diagnostic information, you need to get CT angiogram. So this is a condition resulted to some sort of myxomatous tumor coming from the arterial adventitia. And there's some kind of mucoid degeneration of media. Usually happen in palpedial. Male-female ratio is five to one. Onset of claudication symptom is usually pretty common. There's usually some kind of focal narrowing of the palpedial artery. Treatment is straight, simple surgical excision, usually done via a palpedial approach. And on the exam, um, the pulse may be present at rest, but when you flex your knee, pulse disappears. So, someone with the big ego call it Ishikawa sign. So, you just need to know that. When you flex your knee, I doubt they're going to ask you about this guy's name, but if you flex your knee, <coughs> pulse disappears. Whereas, if you dorsiflex or plantar flex, and the pulse disappears. In that setting, you think about pop radio artery entrapment. So knee flexion, pulse disappears. You think about adventitial cyst disease of palpedial artery. And um, so again, palpedial entrapment, you get that with a dorsiflexion or plantar flexion, and then pulse disappears. Again, we talked about earlier, Marfan syndrome is associated with a fibrillin gene mutation. So a fibrillin 1 gene de deletion or mutation, that's associated with Marfan, not with this condition. Angiographically, CT scan, you can see there's a mucoid mass 
located in the adventitial space, shown there. And, uh, and geographically, you can see some kind of asymmetrical compression of the area. And uh, this is another sign, scimitar sign, but again, basically showing that there is an asymmetrical or eccentric stenosis along this area. And the surgical excision, yeah, a popliteal approach is performed. You simply just remove the tumor. Similar to it, the subapotential dissection of the carotid body tumor. You simply have to excise it. You don't have to do a bypass. This is before, this is after. All right, arteritis nodosa can result in aneurysm formation in which of the following vessels? A, celiac artery, B, superior mesenteric artery, C, splenic artery, D, inferior mesenteric artery, E, common hepatic artery. Raise your hand, think answers A, B, C, D, E. Okay, all right. Um, answer is SMA, B. Okay, this is what you need to know. This condition, periarteritis nodosa, is an inflammatory destruction of the media. Um, very common, but most commonly, obviously, is an SMA. Okay, um, treatment is steroid cyclophosphamide. So it's not a surgical problem. All right, IMV, inferior mesenteric vein, trans to which are following uh, structure. A, portal vein, B, splenic vein, C, SMV, superior mesenteric vein, D, hepatic vein, E, not above. Raise your hand thing as A, B, C, D, E. Oh, okay. So for those five people who raise your hand, in the, the, the answer is A, that's a B. Splenic vein. So this question tests your anatomical knowledge. <clears throat> mesenteric vein thrombosis is common on your exam. So you know, know, you know the anatomy. Here is IMB. So the anatomical configuration is very different than, than the arterial configuration. So IMB shown here drawing into the splenic vein. So the confluence of the splenic, splenic vein, which we see flow through the IMV, joins the SMV that turn into a portal vein. Which of the following is the most common visceral aneurysm? A, celiac artery, B, SMA, C, hepatic, D, splenic. Raise your hand, and you think the answer is A, B, C, D. Okay, splenic artery is the most common visceral artery aneurysm shown here. Usually it's in a distal segment of splenic hilum. The criteria necessary to diagnose somebody with a Berger syndrome, Berger's disease, include which are following, except what? A, history of tobacco use, B, onset of disease or symptom before age 45, C, male gender, D, arterial pathology arising distal to the knee and elbow, and E, corkscrew appearance on angiogram, secondary to this enlarged vase over sorum. Okay, so question here is except. Okay, so many of these conditions are needed in order to make diagnosis, but one of them you don't. Okay, so raise your hand thing as A, B, C, D, E. Okay, all right. So the answer is C. This condition, I'll talk about in a second, happened, heavy smoker, usually young. In fact, specific diagnosis required a patient to have the disease before age 45. It can happen in male and female, uh, usually happen in distal tibial vessels, and um, you get a, a cork-like screw appearance secondary to enlarged vase over sorum. So this condition is also known as a thromboangiitis obliterant. Don't know the cause, but it's very common in heavy smokers. Um, it can happen in female, and uh, there's some kind of inflammation, and um, a lot of people become disabled because of severe problem. Clinical features of this condition, diagnosis number one, um, there are five of them. So, so you know, you need to four out the five before you make the diagnosis of Berger's disease. So one of the conditions include age 45, infrapopulative disease. You can also involve upper arm. And um, importantly, there is some kind of inflammatory venous component for phlebitis migraine. So these people may be at risk of develop, developing DVT. So a patient may come in here with thrombophlebitis. So that could be a hallmark feature of burger disease. So this, again, I'll highlight, I underline this because this has shown up on your exam before. And also importantly, patient does not have the usual atherosclerotic risk factors such as diabetes. 
So four out of five are, ne are needed before you make the diagnosis of Berger disease. Angiographically, this is what a picture looks like. 